This is the Flashforge Adventurer 3, a gorgeous, fully enclosed 3D printer from Flashforge, one of the first 3D printed companies I ever reviewed here on the channel. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Flashforge has been a strong contender in the hobby 3D printing market for absolutely ages now. They were one of the first companies to graduate from laser cut wood and plastic to fully injection molded 3D printer designs with the Flashforge Dreamer that I reviewed back in 2015 or so. It's clear though that Flashforge has refined their production quality even further since then with this, the Adventurer 3. This fully enclosed 3D printer sports a print volume of 150 by 150 by 150 millimeters, small, yes, but definitely still capable, a heated bed with removable print surface, a Garolite plate, and a fully custom Bowden extruder and hot end. More on that shortly. Flashforge has clearly taken some design notes from consumer inkjet printers to cut costs while retaining functionality. The Y-axis, for example, only has one linear rod yeah, and an unsupported side which rides on a roller. It looks pretty dodgy and I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but the print quality doesn't seem to be affected by it. Similarly, the gantry does have Z-axis lead screws on both sides, but they're both slave to one motor with a belt to save weight and cost. Overall, a lot of effort has gone into both the aesthetics and functionality of this little unit, and Flashforge must be selling an awful lot to justify this much injection molding. But this is more than just a pretty box. On top of being a small enclosed heated bed 3D printer, the Adventure 3 also has a color touch screen, Wi-Fi connectivity with webcam, filament outage detection, and quick swap hot ends. That's right, power off the machine and you can quickly swap the entire hot end assembly in seconds. This custom injection molded unit includes a heat cartridge, nozzle and guide tube in one totally sealed unit and Flashforge retails them for about 30 bucks US. For those of you who like to DIY your way through nozzle blockages and issues, that'll be a big downside of this design. It's not user serviceable at all. But for schools, universities or time poor hobbyists, it's pretty awesome to be able to swap out nozzles and get the next print underway straight away should an issue arise. And in my case, an issue did indeed arise. My first test prints were done using the default settings in flash print and the tiny, very tiny sample spool that came with it and the prints came out pretty dang nice. The cube to test was near perfect, and this Geyer Anderson cat is super smooth at the 0.12 millimeter layer heights, and my clearance gauge got down to 0.3 millimeter gaps, which is accurate enough for most people. However, for some reason, the printer struggled to print this sliding 15 piece puzzle properly with the parts welding together. I did notice during printing that the corners were curling up a little, which I suspect is a cooling issue, and this Triceratops in Polyarchemy FX looks really good as well, other than a few wispy strings. At this stage, I was swapping between the sample roll, which is tiny, and a few other filaments back and forth, and somewhere along the line, I noticed the extruder start to click. And the print quality got worse, and then it went insane. I have no idea what happened to this rabbit. In ABS plastic, it's just an absolute disaster. <laughs> Now, what caused all of this is unknown to me. It might have just been a time thing, or it might have been caused by one or more of the filaments I was testing, but there are already heaps of videos out on the Adventure of 3, so I did my research and sadly found out that the clicking extruder is a well-known issue. Some people have found success increasing the printing temperature, slowing print speed down, adding an oiler, or even modifying the Bowden extruder in some way. I just told Flashforge to send me a new hot end. Like the Silhouette Outer I reviewed recently, this is aimed at a different market to kit 3D printers, like the Ender 3 and other tinkerer friendly machines. A lot of this machine is locked down, and really tinkering shouldn't be expected, in my opinion, beyond some basic mods, like maybe a bigger spool holder. Well, that new hot end came, and I used the tiny bit of remaining sample roll and some Aqua PLA to print another Triceratops. And it worked great again. So there really was something wrong with that first hot end assembly. However, different PLAs demonstrated vastly different results, such as this red opaque PLA, which when printed at the same default settings as the Flashforge PLA, 
had terrible dimensional accuracy and the clearance gauge only barely got down to 0.4 millimeter gaps. I did heaps of tests and slicer tweaks and a big thanks to my buddy Ed here, he uses his Adventure 3 constantly. He clued me into the fact you can unlock advanced settings in flash print, which is Mega handy. This lattice bunny was printed with no supports and is incredibly challenging. It's certainly an impressive print and I was able to improve but not fully eliminate the wispy strings on prints. This tells me two things. One, the Adventurer 3 is very much tuned for their own formulation of PLA and like tier time printers, if you want out of the box functionality, you probably should pair it with their own consumables. And two, the cooling fan is inadequate to properly cool PLA, hence the edge curling on some prints and the subtle stringing issues. But heated bed and enclosed sounds great for ABS, right? Well, in fact, yes. The Adventurer 3 handles ABS really well and the bed reaches temperature far faster than any of the other machines I've got on hand, which is really quite impressive. As long as you calibrated your nozzle height correctly, then the prints stick well and they can easily be flexed off after cooling. I really do like this little removable print bed and I'm so happy to see this kind of thing becoming industry standard. I did mention that this machine has Wi-Fi connectivity and you can access it by connecting the machine to your network and then entering its IP address in flash print. Sadly, this does change every time you cycle power to the printer, which can be a little frustrating for home use. For my test, I primarily loaded G-code from USB and it works fairly well, although I did have some strange mounting errors on occasion where the USB wouldn't be recognized and have to, you know, pull it out and put it back in. And invariably Windows would say there's something wrong with it and would want to repair it, even though there didn't seem to be any real damage. This machine is also super quiet, with the main noise source being the cooling fan during operation and not the motion components. It's definitely appreciated if you're, for example, teaching or working in the same room, although I don't really recommend sleeping in the same room as a 3D printer. It, however, is very vocal with beeps on startup and the completion of prints. but thankfully you can disable it. Now, I really wasn't happy with the results I was getting with third party filament with the wispy stringiness of the PLA prints, but I figured it's not really fair to judge FlashForge based on my opinion on third party filament results. So to conclude my review, I went and bought some actual FlashForge PLA from my local J car and completed these final prints. So take these as a good evaluation of the print quality you can expect from this machine using their own filament and flash print with some very minor slicer setting changes. While surface quality is generally good, there does seem to be some intermittent layer inconsistencies on occasion, and that subtle stringing does persist. I've printed an upgraded cooling fan mod, which was recommended to help combat this, and I'll definitely be trying that out in future. So final thoughts on the Adventure of 3. These conclusions are seriously never easy. And once again, like all my reviews, this is my personal opinion on a product and yours may differ. The Adventure 3 is pretty close to being a great printer for people who just want a 3D printer to print. It looks good and for the most part prints well enough. The swappable hot end, while pricey, will be welcome in busy environments where you simply can't spend the time or expertise changing a nozzle manually and having to re-level and set your nozzle height but I can't ignore the hot end issues that I encountered and many others encountered during their testing, as well as the somewhat intermittent printing quality problems. It might well be down to the slicer, it might be down to the Bowden extruder design, I'm not sure. At a price point of around 450 US or $670 Australian, it's not the cheapest on the market for its fairly small print volume, but it is a strong contender for the print out of the box market segment that they're clearly aiming for. I'd just like to see those print issues cleared up. If you're keen to pick up one of these, there'll be a purchase link below and full disclosure, Flashwatch sent me the Adventure of 3 across free of charge for purpose of review and all opinions are my own. And because this machine is so prolific, there's a lot of other really good reviews out there from my fellow YouTubers. So if you wanna get some more information on this printer, I'll link some of those videos below. Thanks for watching guys, bye.